In today's video, we are going to go over what is inductance and what is an inductor. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my analytics, I see that so many people who watch our videos haven't subscribed. Please subscribe to the notification bell. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. Whether you're looking for examples, practice problems with all the solutions, notes, puzzles, and a bunch of great labs that you can do with the PHET Interactive Online Simulations, it's all there at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And let's get started. What is, an in what is inductance and what is an inductor. Well, an inductor is simply a coil of wire. You take a wire, make it into a coil, you have an inductor, you have a coil of wire, and that inductor has inductance. So, a coil of wire in a circuit is an inductor, and it has inductance. If you pass a current through that coil of wire, then there will be a magnetic field inside that coil of wire, and energy is stored inside that magnetic field. If you change the current through the coil, that changes the magnetic field, which changes the magnetic flux, which causes a self-induced voltage across that coil of wire. If you change the current through a coil of wire, you get a self-induced voltage, and that self-induced voltage tries to resist any changes in current. That's what coils do. They don't like it when the current changes. They're okay with a constant current, but if you change the current, then that coil is going to work by producing a self-induced voltage to try to resist that change in current. And this self-induced voltage will try to resist any changes in current, whether it's increasing or decreasing current through that coil of wire. Okay, that's what inductors do. They try to keep the current from changing rapidly, we don't like it when we have spikes in the current. Okay, now, I'm going to just show you really quick what that looks like using one of the simulations in PHT Interactive Simulations. Here's the website. Here's the name of the simulation. It's an HTML simulation, so you can use it right there on your computer, tablet, or uh, Chromebook. Okay, so here I have a simple circuit. I have a battery, a switch, a resistor, and here's my inductor, a coil of wire. And you will see I'm just measuring the current here over time. And when I close this switch, you will notice that the current does not go up immediately to its maximum. It takes time. You can see it takes some time there for the current to reach its maximum. And that's what the current is. That's what the inductor is doing. It's trying to resist the flow of the current or the change in current. Now I can run this again. I can open this. You see it goes back to zero. And then I can simply close this again and you see the same effect again. That current is changing over time. Okay, if I just had a resistor, it would go up and then have reach its maximum, but here it's changing over time. And that's what inductors do. Okay, let's go back and talk about our, some more stuff about inductors and inductance. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to drive the equations for you for inductance and for the self-induced voltage across a coil of wire. Now, this is Faraday's law. Faraday's law simply says that the induced voltage is equal to minus the number of windings times the rate of change of the magnetic flux. B, the magnetic field strength, times the area of the coil. That will give us an induced voltage if we change that. And this is one way that we can write Faraday's law. Now, we also have the equation for the magnetic field through the coil of wire. B is the magnetic field for the coil. It's mu naught times n, the number of windings, times i, the current, divided by the length of the coil. If we know all of these properties of the coil, then we can calculate the magnetic field through the coil. Okay, now, you can see here, I have B in here in this equation, the magnetic field, and this is for a coil of wire we're talking about. This is the induced voltage from a coil of wire. So I'm just going to take this term, and I'm going to substitute it right in here for B. So I have B like that, and you can see the part that I put here in blue, that is simply this part right here. Okay, so I just have minus N, this is this N, this is B, this is the change in the current over time. Excuse me, the change in the area, this is the area, change in the area over time. All right, now I'm going to simplify this equation, and when I simplify this equation, you know, you'll see I have N squared, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the constant, mu naught, out in front, I have my minus sign still, I have N squared now, I have my area, I switched my area and my current, I'm just multiplying it, and I have 
my length on the bottom here. And I did this because what I'm going to do with the current, with the coil to get it to produce a self induced voltage is I'm going to change the current over time. All right? Now, you'll notice, so this is the equation that we could use to calculate um, the induced voltage. But you'll notice I have all of these terms right here, okay? Not the minus sign, but all of these terms right here. This is a constant. If I have a coil of wire, it has kind of a set number of windings. You typically don't change the number of windings. It has a set area and it has a set length. So all of these terms right here, one, two, three, four, these are all physical properties of the coil of wire. They are not going to be changing. What's going to be changing is the current through the coil. So I'm going to take all of these out, and this is what is the inductance. This is how we calculate the inductance. The inductance has a symbol L, okay, and it's measured in the unit Henry. And the inductance of a coil of wire is simply calculated as mu naught, which we'll do a couple examples towards the end of the video, times n, the number of windings squared, times a, the cross-sectional area of the coil, and divided by L. Okay, now, this is one way you can write the induced voltage for a coil of wire, self-induced voltage for a coil of wire. But typically, we don't write it like that. Typically, we write the self-induced voltage like this. We say the self-induced voltage is equal to minus L, which is the inductance, which is all of this stuff, times the rate of change of the current. So this is the equation that we use to calculate the self-induced voltage, and this is the equation we use to calculate the actual inductance. This is the inductance, has the symbol L, has the unit Henry. This is the self-induced voltage. It's the inductance times the rate of change of the current. Now, this minus sign doesn't mean that the self-induced voltage is going to be less than zero. It just means that the self-induced voltage is opposite polarity to try to resist that change in current. All right? So this is the inductance equation, and this is the self-induced voltage equation. Now, we know that we have resistors, capacitors, and this is a coil of wire right here. This is my inductor. So I just thought we would compare, because we know that resistors have resistance, and this is how we calculate the resistance. Okay? It's R times rho times the length divided by the area. The symbol is, resist is R for resistance, and the unit is the ohm. For a capacitor, okay, it's the capacitance equal to the constant, all right, times the area divided by the distance between the plates, the area of the plates. It has a capacitance measured in farads. And then we have inductance. This is how we calculate the inductance. Okay, the inductance has a symbol L, and it's a unit in Henry. So for these three objects, these three circuit elements, you can see their resistance, their capacitance, and their inductance is defined by their physical properties. For resistance, it's the length divided by the area, cross-sectional area. For capacitance, the area of the plates divided by the plate separation. For the inductor, the inductance is calculated, is dependent upon the number of windings squared, the square of the number of windings, the cross-sectional area of the coil, and the length of the coil. Okay, so I just think it's interesting to compare resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Three passive circuit elements. Okay, now let's just talk about what a Henry is. Okay, so this is, of course, inductance, has a symbol L, and the unit is a Henry. Well, what is a Henry? Well, here's the equation for our self-induced voltage. Okay, and we're going to solve this equation for L, which means we're just going to divide by the rate of change of the current. When we do that, we get L, the inductance is equal to the voltage, the induced voltage, Self-induced voltage divided by the rate of change, the current. And if we do that, we replace it with the units, we can see that one Henry, okay, an inductor that is a one Henry inductor, will produce one volt of self-induced voltage when the current changes one amp per second. All right? So we can say that inductor with an inductance of one Henry will produce a self-induced voltage of one volt for every one amp of current change per second. Okay, so that's inductance, and that's what a Henry is. Okay, now we're going to do a couple examples to get uh, get the point across. So number one, we're going to calculate the inductance of a cylindrical coil of wire, so it has a round cross section, 
has a length of 35, 35 centimeters, a diameter of 10 centimeters, and it has 1,700, 1,750 windings. It says here, calculate the inductance. So we're going to use our inductance equation. We're not calculating the self-induced voltage. We'll do that next, of course. We're just calculating the inductance, and that means that L is the constant, and this is the constant, mu naught. Okay, this is 4 times pi times 10 to the minus 7 Henry meter, Henry per meter. And we have the number of windings, which is 1,700. We've got to square that. And this is the area. Now, this is a cylindrical coil of wire, so it's a round coil of wire, so it's a cross-sectional area as a circle, pi r squared. Okay? It says it has a diameter of 10 centimeters, which means it has a radius of 5 centimeters, pi r, the radius. We're going to square the radius and divide by the length. And you get an inductor that has an inductance L of 0 0.0864 henrys which is 86 millihenries like that. That's how you calculate the inductance. Okay, now, of course, we're going to calculate the self-induced voltage. We have a coil of wire. We're going to give you, this time, the, 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 the inductance. The current flowing through it of 2.5 amperes. We want to know what's the self-induced voltage. If the current increases to 6.5 amperes over a time of 10 milliseconds. So, here's the equation for the self-induced voltage. Okay, we have an increase in current. So, we, we're given the, the inductance is 0 0.5. Now, keep the minus sign. This is going to be a positive change, so it's going to be a minus voltage. The voltage is going to be minus. So, 6.5 minus 2.5, that's the change. It's a positive change of 4. And 10 milliseconds is 10 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. You do that, and you get a self-induced voltage of 2 100 volts. And I left the minus sign out here, of course, but this in self-induced voltage should be minus 200 volts. Okay? It's opposing that change. All right. There you go. Now, I've got one more example. We have an air-filled coil of wire, and we have these dimensions for our coil of wire. It has a length of 12 centimeters. It has 1,500 windings. It has a cross-sectional area of 3.0 times 10 to the minus 2 meters squared. We have a change in the current, so we're, going to in, we're just going to say we're going to increase the current by 2.8 amperes, and we have a, uh, uh, that's going to happen over a time of 4 milliseconds. We want to know what is the inductance of the coil, what is the self-induced coil, and we're going to calculate how much energy is stored in the magnetic field of that coil of wire. Okay, we're going to do the inductance first, so of course we're going to use our inductance equation. We're just going to plug our values in. Here's our constant. Okay, N is 1,500 winding squared. Here's the cross-sectional area. You just square the number of windings, not the cross-sectional area. This is me. This is the area squared in meters, and the length. Of course, you can see it's in centimeters. You got to give it. You got to give the. You got to put that in there in meters, and therefore you get that that is 0 0.71 Henry. Is that inductance of that coil? Okay, so you can see we have that there, and now we're going to calculate the self-induced voltage. Once again, we're just going to calculate that as minus the inductance times the rate of change of the current. The rate of change of the current is 2.8. For 4 milliseconds, 10 to the minus 3 milli. And, of course, I left the minus sign off again. This should be minus, okay, the in induced voltage is minus 4.97 volts because it's an increasing current. So there should be minus 497 volts like that. Okay, for our number C here, the last one, we're going to calculate the energy, okay, the energy that's stored. And the energy that's stored in a coil of wire is given as W. Now, W is like work, but that's work and energy are the same thing. Basically, if we do work, we're going to be storing energy in the coil or in the magnetic field. It's one-half the inductance times the current squared. All right? And we're going to say that that's one-half. We said the inductance was 0 0.71 Henry, and the change in current is 2.8 amperes, and that means that that battery, that coil is going to store 2.78 joules of energy in that coil of wire. Okay? So there you go. That is a nice introduction to inductors and inductance. Remember, a coil of wire in a circuit is an inductor and it has inductance. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do all the following five things. Don't forget, please support our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all of our excellent, <clears throat> excuse me, Physics coming in math videos by subscribing. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.